Isn't it interesting how we'll have like one failure or setback or frustration and then your brain is like, well, this happens all the time, right? Yeah. Yep. But then we'll have like one success or, you know, positive thing or do something really well. And we're like, oh, well, that was just a fluke. <laughs> You know, I was just talking to my girlfriends about how our earliest memories are usually like the traumas and the painful experiences versus like happy moments, right? You don't really remember that many, maybe if it's extremely happy, sure, but there's a lot of happy moments that we don't remember because I don't know why our brain just like doesn't give it importance, but we remember more of like the the painful stuff that sticks out or the failures. Is that something that, that you find in the way people think? Yeah. And again, Eileen, that's adaptive, right? Like it actually, it's our brain trying to protect us. So you're not going to be protected by remembering the good stuff. You're going to be protected by remembering the bad stuff. So we think back to like our ancestors, you're not going to be protected by only focusing on the berries that you Mm -hmm. ate and that you know, nourished you and that made you feel great. You're only going to be protected by remembering the berries that someone ate and then dropped dead. Right? So <laughs> of you're going to know, Just okay, survive. yeah, I'm not going to do that again. So the reason why our brains have this like natural negative bias, which they have found now in the research, which is the same reason why we often remember the painful or the difficult or the traumatic experiences is because our brain wants to keep those in the fore- forefront to not repeat them again. Mm-hmm. Right? Because again, our brain is wanting to keep us safe. And you can thank your brain. You can be like, thank you, brain, so much for doing your job by trying to make me remember all of these terrible things <laughs> to try to keep me safe. But then overriding that again and being like, but I am safe. I am okay. I am resourceful. I am resilient. You don't have to protect me quite so much. And it's now safe for us to focus on the good things, the positive things, the love, the connection, the trust, the safety. It's okay for us to focus on that now. Yeah, I love that. Um, So let's talk about self-esteem because I think that's such a foundation for living a great life. What would you say are like the keys to building like a healthy self-esteem? Man. (laughs) I know this can go deep. No, it is so simple. Oh, is it? It's one of my favorite. This this thing came out of my mouth one day and nothing has ever made more sense where the only thing that makes confident people special is that they know they don't have to be special before they can be confident. So, so many of us think that our sense of self, self self-esteem, self-confidence, feeling good about ourselves is a destination. Once I do this, once I look like this, once I achieve this, once I accomplish this, once I have this, I'm going to feel good about myself. I'm going to finally let myself feel good about myself because I have done the thing that I think is going to give that to me. But what if I could just feel good about myself now? as I am, who I am, how I am, flaws, mistakes, awkwardness, right? Like imperfections, all of it. What if confidence, feeling like a really strong sense of self was not a destination, but it was a decision? Mm -hmm. And I just decide because, you know, even thinking about that again, There are people out there who are breaking our rules all the time, right? People tell themselves, well, well, like I have to look like this before I can be confident. But then there's people who don't look like that who are like, yeah, I feel great about myself. Or I have to have this certain body or this kind of hair or this kind of job or this level of success or this many friends or whatever sort of we we are trying to get to before we can feel good about ourselves. But then there's people without those things who feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. And we're like oh, what if the only (laughs) thing that's been preventing me from feeling good about myself is this thing right here, this like mass between my two ears. Mm. But the the big question for a lot of people is how do you do it, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And this is a beautiful, like this is more kind of recently been integrated in my work. 
And it's this concept um, of, it's called radical self-love, which includes radical self-acceptance. So what's radical about it is that I am not going to try to become anyone or anything else as a stipulation for my self-love and for my self-acceptance. And maybe some of us need to start with self-acceptance before we can move into the love part, but it's about radically accepting the good, the bad, the dark, the light, all of who we are. Now, it doesn't mean we have to love all the parts of us, but we can love this sort of whole intricate, interesting, complex being and accept that as a human, I come with all the parts. And if I actually want to work through some things that I feel like are causing, you know, holding me back, that are not allowing me to live my best life, then I'm going to work on those things. But I still accept that they are a part of me. Because we can't actually work through something if we're not willing to acknowledge that it exists in the first place. So what does radical self-love like look like, not look like, but what is it, what is it, what's happening in your brain? (laughs) Like when you're choosing to love yourself? Yeah. And I guess, I mean, it's called radical self-love, but it's not even that radical. Because if we think about children, and I don't know, like probably most people have a child in their life that they love, right? If it's your own child, if it's a niece, a nephew, a really close family friend, and that child acts like a jerk sometimes. Like, let's be honest, that child can be annoying. They can be kind of a jerk. They can be selfish. They can be difficult, right? They can be moody, but you're not like, ooh, I don't love you because you come with all these other parts. I don't love you because you act like a little terrorist sometimes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? We're like, yeah, I love you. I love you. What you're doing right now is kind of annoying and it's not my favorite you know, way that you behave, but I love you. That doesn't change. I still think you're an incredible human being. And I think, still think that you are amazing. And I just am in awe of you. Why can't we do that for ourselves? It's the same idea where we have all these stipulations and all these parameters and all these hoops that we need to jump through before we're going to allow ourselves to be like, yeah, like you're an awesome human being. And I think that you're amazing. I didn't say I think you're perfect and you can do no wrong because I'm, you know, that's not possible. But with all of it, I still think you are an amazing human being. And I love you and I value you. And I see you and I know that you come with all of it. And that's okay. Okay. 